There is no global system to measure wind around our planet, at least until now. The Aeolus satellite should fill a large gap in our knowledge once it has been validated. This observatory in the far north is the perfect spot to gather comparable data. The satellite is rotating around the Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole and back. And the further north you go, it's like with the lines on the map, the, uh, the lines come closer, so you have the, the satellite tracks coming closer geographically. From its vantage point in space, Aeolus takes readings of the wind from 30 kilometers in altitude right down to the Earth's surface. For the next few months, the scientists will be using every tool at their disposal on the ground to gather wind readings to compare with the satellite data. They even use the faithful old weather balloon, two of which are launched from Ondoya every day. Well, it's important to have uh, different instruments measuring the same parameters. Uh, we use slightly different techniques in the, with the different instruments. So we can compare the measurements and we can cover uh, a bigger height range. So with the lasers, we can cover up to 100 kilometers. The balloon will burst at 30 kilometers. And then we have radars covering also up to approximately 100 kilometers. Aeolus is what ESA calls an explorer mission, meaning it's cutting edge technology. If it works and the weather forecasts are measurably improved, then several similar satellites could be launched. So far, uh, everything is working really to schedule and even the performance of the instrument is exceeding our uh, expectations. We'd all like our weather forecasters to have magical powers, to be able to see far into the future. Unfortunately, they don't. They just have data. And with the Aeola satellite, they have a great new source of information all around our planet about what's happening to the winds. With that, they have an understanding of what's happening now, and they can better predict what's going to happen in the next few days, everywhere from here in the Arctic Circle all the way down to the equator. Well, Jeremy, that's a bit confusing. We just saw you in Norway there, and now you're here in the oh, yeah. studio. <laughs> but, um, so, look, you are a space correspondent. You've been following the story. We have just seen you in Norway. So, so why did this mission face so many delays? Yes, it is, it turns out, incredibly difficult to get a satellite with a laser in space that's going to work accurately how you want. The engineers at Airbus, who actually built this in the UK, um, basically took 10 years longer than expected to develop the laser system. Obviously, it went over budget, mm -hmm. but it really shows the tenacity of the team at the European Space Agency and the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts who really wanted this satellite. The reason being, as I said in the package, is that there's no system worldwide to measure the wind. And so we really don't know very much about it, particularly over the ocean areas. Well, I suppose if it's gone 10 years over kind of the expected time, you can only hope that it's going to really improve our weather forecast. How good is it going to be? Yes, well, the, uh, the scientists are being cagey, as, as they normally are at the moment. They're just going step by step. Things are working quite well. They do believe that Aeolus will have a significant measurable impact on the weather forecast, particularly longer term. The places you're really going to see a difference is over the tropics, which covers a huge part of, um, uh, of the world, and in the polar regions, where I was in Norway, where at the moment there's really not very much wind data. Um, it also could be the case that with Aeolus we get a better idea of where storms travel, for example, big hurricanes, those sort of things that become big disasters. And at the moment, we have a lot of uncertainty about where they're going to go. Aeolus could give us a much better idea of where winds generally tend to go um, over a series of years. And then you can start to model, well, where will the um, hurricane travel with a bit more accuracy. So it promises an awful lot if the technology checks out.